the inner sound, y'all. Let's celebrate today. We're going to celebrate that voice you just heard. We're going to celebrate this group. I say it often. The most, influ the most influential group in my life goes by the name of De La Soul. Oh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. The most impactful group on me as an individual <laughs> goes by the name of De La Soul. Preach, good morning, preach. everybody. I was able good to morning. find my voice through this phenomenal, iconic group that goes by the name of what? De La, De La Soul. Soul. Give them a big round of applause, hey, man. We hey. got my brother. Hey. Kelvin Plug, Juan Mercer hey, here, hey, Vincent oh, Mason. Oh. Mace. I went all the way, Mason. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> no, that's, that's radio. Necessary. He's a radio op. Be careful, though. He's, he's an op. He's an op. You office where you are. Y'all my brothers. I got to say it, man. Let's go all the way. Go and, and, all the way. And, and our brother, True Goy, is here with he's us here with in us. spirit, man. He's definitely. here to celebrate that yeah, man. Celebrate. Yes. That's why I played yeah. back that clip. Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. That's why I played back that clip, man. And I reached out when I found about it found out about his passing and mm. the celebration started there. Mm -hmm. You know, some of us, you know, we, we don't know when our time is gonna come. Sure you don't. You know, and that's why it's so important that we treat every moment like, you know, it's special. Yes. True indeed. Because it can't ever come back. But the legacy, mm. the impact that this man was able to make <clears throat> alongside you guys, um, is unparalleled. So mm. I wanna give a big round of applause, man. Just the first time I ever heard y'all, man. I mm. told this story the other day. Yep, you sure did. Mm. First time I ever came to New York was in 1989, mm. 88, 89. I think it was 89. And I was excited and I was scared, like, at the same time, mm -hmm. being from the West Coast, I cannot explain it. Mm -hmm. You know, walking into a, a new world, really under, trying to really explore hip-hop, this culture, what I thought, you know, was good about the culture and finding... Um, moments, you know, we came into it, B boys, B girls dancing on Pier Thirty Nine, King Tech, and myself, mm. and then DJing and graph writing all these things. And so I remember coming to New York, not knowing what to expect. That's what scared me. And I went to some basement party on the Lower East Side Ooh. somewhere, <laughs> you know, and it was all these kids dressed differently. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, look how these kids look at their hair, mm. like look how they're expressing themselves. Look at their clothes look like. Fashionable hand me downs. <laughs> Not fashionable hand me downs. <laughs> right? And then potholes in my line came on. Mm. That was the first song I ever remember hearing. Wow. When I first came to New York, wow. was potholes in my lawn. My wow. goodness. And there was nothing else in mm -mm. the world that sounded like that song. King Tech was with me. Y'all, man, I know I tell y'all this, Word. but I got to tell you this Salute shit. Because like, mm -hmm. we came on the radio in 1990, mm. right? right? And we had an idea of what we wanted to do based on that experience. Mm -hmm. wow. Yo, we can do, be, say, look however we mm -hmm. want to because these guys who made that song Potholes in My Line don't look like nobody else. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole party here. That's going crazy that can identify with whatever the energy, the vibration that was coming off your music, mm. right? And so for that reason, we were able to have confidence in what we were playing on that platform, the Wake Up Show, when we play De La Soul, or we'll play Jungle Brothers, mm -hmm. you know, uh, or we'll play Native, all the Native Tongue artists, or we'll play an artist by the name of Nasty Nas mm -hmm. or Akineli that people hadn't heard of yet. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wu-Tang, all these different things. So for that, once again, I have to say thank you. Mm. Thank you to De La Soul. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Honestly. Love Come on, sweat. man. Yeah, Come on, man. man. Love sweat. Can I keep going? Yeah. Can I keep going? Yeah, keep yeah. flowing. Do, do keep it, flowing. Preach. Do what you do best, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like you know, Sway gonna say it's about give, give him ten minutes before we inter before we interject. Um, and so when you guys came up here a few years back, mm -hmm. and we had this conversation about why your music wasn't streaming, y'all remember this conversation, and sure. we just put our foot in it because I thought it was. Everything that's wrong about the music business, the music industry, is why your music wasn't streaming. Yeah. Everything 
that's wrong about the music business, in my opinion, is why De La Soul has it. Even though you received a lot of accolades and acknowledgement, it's not to the tune of your output and what you contributed to this culture and how many people have been able to eat off of it. Mm. You know, and so we had this conversation. I remember Tommy Silverman and folks reached out to me about it, you know, because I think somebody wanted to come talk. And I was like, it's not about that. Mm. It's about getting this story out. And it's a shame that these juggernauts music can't be heard in this new format that we call streaming. Um, as a result of that, I think we're part of the catalyst of the hard work that you guys had already began even prior to that conversation and the conversations you've had since then with other platforms. Um, and salute to those other platforms. We will be celebrating that De La Soul's first six albums will be available on Spotify and Amazon Word. tomorrow! Let's tomorrow. Go! Tomorrow. 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 Tomorrow, Friday. Word up. M midnight. Word up. <laughs> Damn it, it's 2023. Who dropped that ball? <laughs> Who fumbled right before the touchdown? touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> Who shot the ball and missed the rim? No doubt. <laughs> Who swung when there wasn't even a I don't know, in bro. Wrong, man. I'm telling you, bro. Oh, nah, man. Man, man how does that, you know... You know, is it, you know, well, can we talk about David first? Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about David first, man. Um, True Goy was, um, when you hear that clip we just played, I could play you clips from him 20 years ago, 30 years ago, where the messaging is still the same. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Y'all met in high school? When did you first, the first day you met him? I moved from um, the Bronx, uh, and I came into Long Island around fourth grade. Mm -hmm. First person I met when I got to the school um, was this uh, a friend of ours, well, a dear friend now, but was this uh, girl named Regina Peters. Okay. She said, I said her name, how you doing, and nice to meet you. And I was like, oh wow, cool. The second person right behind her I met was a brother named Mike Jolicoeur. Mm -hmm. And through him, I met Dave because yep. Mike and Dave were brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I I I knew and met Dave and from fourth grade on. So wow. that's how long I've known this kid. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Fourth grade. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> Damn. That's a life did, partner. Did, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It, it, so y'all weren't rapping in the fourth grade, nah, like nah, so. I just knew. And in mind you, even then, Dave was like, you know, that's that's Mike's brother Dave. But you know, we doing our thing. Dave was like a grade ahead of us. Mm -hmm. You know, and what boys do, have fun, whatever. But me and Dave like really connected. By the time I got to like about ninth grade, me and him had to do this summer course together in junior high mm -hmm. to pass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> from so there, was slumping. Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So from <laughs> there is where we kind of like really like like latched on to each other. And then, of course, hip hop just latched onto the whole community. Yeah. yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then from there, you put in your work and you start f realizing who's this and who can do that. And Dave was ill at beatboxing. Uh huh. You know, he was just a beatboxer. But from there, just a good friend, a good person. He was quiet, but Dave could fight. <laughs> he had a nice knuckle game? Nice knuckle. Yeah. Okay. You may see yourself, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. much so. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. A good a good person. We you know, just kids having fun, just enjoying music and hip hop just took our lives over, you know. Did you know like when I met um Tech uh, I always put myself in their stories, Heather, because I, I, I'm... Well, I'm, I know this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm trying to keep our legacies attached. <laughs> no, it's noticed. funny you say that, Plug One. When I met Tech, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I noticed about Tech early on uh, when we were in high school is he likes to lead, mm. right? And I grew up with a in Oakland with, just surrounded by alpha males with big fangs mm. right and so it was like I thought it was interesting because he was in Hayward a different place he likes to lead and he seems to be great at that organizing the crew that's cool because I didn't want to manage all that energy right and that stayed consistent through all of our success was there something about Dave that you notice as a youth that hmm he has this certain quality about him that stood out but for Dave it was like diff Dave was Amongst the people who knew him, yeah, Dave could bug out, laugh, but majority of people, like Dave was really quiet, chose his words, mm -hmm. saw things for what it was, 
So he like where his brother, he was very more out, outgoing. So then when you saw his talent at something, it was just like, and Dave could draw. Like even by the mm. time we, we go up into like say even graduating, Dave was on his way to be an architect. So wow. Dave, wow. Yeah. yeah, he went to architectural school. Everything, like yeah. When in the, we, in the when, village of Amityville, yeah. and he went to, then he transferred to uh, New York Tech. Yeah. To New, so, York, yeah. to New York. Yeah, Tech, so yeah. He, he was just always really good at drawing and all that. And like I said, he showed me a, a side when it came to hip hop beatboxing but his cousin Andy had equipment at his house and when I heard him rhyme that was my first time like yo Dave you rhyme because even me I was more like trying to say like I want to be a DJ even though I was like a closet trying to write words because I was always into just writing but Dave this Dave from day one had flow I mean like a lot of times when you look at MCs and you look at their albums and you see the progression of like, wow, yeah, like yeah. he looks, he's you can hear the confidence coming. Like from day one, Dave had this like ill flow from day one. And it was like, it blew me away. Like, I'm being honest, like anyone who ever tried to give me a compliment, humble me by saying how good I am. The only reason why is because I couldn't be left behind mm -hmm. with what I knew he could do. Mm -hmm. Straight up, because it was all there. Like, me rhyming, me putting together words, me crafting words, me knowing that I got a session coming up, I craft my words, hit that plate, Dave would be sitting right there, inspired by me, push out a rhyme in like 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Damn. Just like that. The same as the rhyme he's, that I took like four very days different. ago. That very was different. Yeah. All day. Who did he like though? Like we all <clears throat> modeled our styles off of somebody in the beginning because he, I didn't, I couldn't tell his. I, I would honestly say it, it goes far as back to the artists who didn't make records, like Kaz, uh -huh. Cold Crush Brothers, uh -huh. uh, Fantastic Romantic, Treacherous uh -huh. Three, Kumo uh -huh. D specifically. Uh -huh. You know, more of those guys. The Wordsmiths, Kumo yeah. D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More, uh -huh. more of those guys than anybody that we either came up with or who made actual records, you know, prior to us. It was those guys who was more on the cassettes from those parties has more, been more his inspiration than anyone else. I think everybody else, he'll love the day, hate him tomorrow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> he was that meticulous and that temperamental with music where it's like he loves something today and then he dissected and be like, mm, I don't know about that. Yeah. You know, uh -huh. He's just real different. Real yeah. different. And and can write a song like Pop said in like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. That used to frustrate me because I'm like, bro, mm. You come in the studio and you knock out the song like you knew the rhyme for a month. Mm -hmm. And he could read it off the paper like nothing. Yeah. yeah. Just mm -hmm. like that. When did you come in, Maceo? I came in in 84. Uh-huh. And I met them in summer school okay. in 85. So you were, were, you, were you flunking too? Were you flunking yeah, with I was, them? Okay. I was flunking okay. when I got okay. to, to Long Island. And uh, we had uh, some, two classes together in summer school. And I lived right across the street from the summer school we were in. You know, it was uh, Amityville Junior High. I lived directly across the street. And we would be in class every morning. And then, like, about 11 a.m., we at my house or at this other dude's house and working on music. Mm -hmm. And it just started to click pretty much from day one because mm -hmm. we were private with it. We were working with each other from school. A lot of people didn't even know. Uh -huh. They were MCs to me. Uh -huh. To everybody else, they would just pass, well, mm -hmm. Merce and Dave. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we always knew Merce was into music. We knew Dave was the beatbox. I knew they was a part of a crew called Easy Street where Pass was the DJ, uh -huh. but he writing rhymes for these other dudes. Mm -hmm. Dave doing the same thing, and he's the beatbox. Uh -huh. By the time we got together, it was a totally different thing. And I think it definitely started with that tape he's talking about that Dave made at his cousin's house. Because we both remember that rhyme to this day. <laughs> How'd the rhyme go? Um, cooler, cooler than cool, suave than supreme. Mechanical melodies, tones to flow upstream. I write, I write lyrics, lyrics that's loyal. All lunatics with the, the, the tin foil. God not goddess, gentle and hottest. Full of Connecticut, Connecticut known, known to be the hottest. D-A-V-E is a long story. Proud of my position and all my glory. Money making music keeps my crew existence. Money making music keeps my crew's existence. No Looney Tunes could ever be witness. 
is. Your naughty, naughty note takers. Your act is illegal. You are the prey, and which I'll be the eagle. Watch, wonder, and wish. My name is JD. We will circulate dreams and fulfill your fantasy. Enter the do. Plug in the mouthpiece. Plug one, plug two. The sounds will be released. A company of flow. A verbal output. My man P.A. Mace, he can never, ever be took. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. And it was over. It was over like a since sonic drum. Yeah, since sonic drum, and it, the the beat was based off of kind of like knowledge me. Uh huh. Knowledge me. Mm-hmm. It was kind of like yeah. that. It was mm. triple. Yeah, Damn, that tri- was the one. In the knowledge room. me. Mm-hmm. Triple. Triple. Uh, who made knowledge me? Uh, uh, original uh, concept. Original concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Original yeah. concept. Yeah. Damn, bug it. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Tracy, and the song was called Drain the Drummer. Drain, Drain the, the Drummer. Yeah. I love that, man. De La Soul is here. We're celebrating. Yes. Mm. True Goy. We got to celebrate this, brother. He's here in spirit. His mm-hmm. energy's here. He's laughing that y'all fumbled his lyrics. Tracy, <laughs> <go ahead. laughs> He's like, damn, y'all yeah. still. I'm that dope, y'all still can't get it right. <laughs> but he's appreciating the effort. Yeah, I tried. This origin story, you know, mm-hmm. that you guys are sharing with us is just so important. And now I want to know, like, how did the name De La Soul come about? Because when I was first introduced to you guys and I heard the name and I just instantly felt connected to it. Because one, it f- sounds like an exotic utopia. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I want to get on a plane and go out to De La Soul. <laughs> <laughs> and then it also kind of sounds like a little Spanish, but mm-hmm. the black with the soul. And I was mm-hmm. like, who are these guys? They're all black though, I'm confused. So talk to me about that. Well, we was trying to figure out names. Back then we were really big in seeing things, being inspired by it. When it came to to figure out a name, my thoughts on it was like, look, I feel like we do everything from our heart and soul. Why don't we call ourselves from the soul? Mm-hmm. Mm. And Dave immediately was like, yo, I love what you're saying, but from the soul don't. <laughs> it don't do it. Like He was, he immediately was like, mm. why don't you say De La Soul? And we was like, yep. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It just clicked right away. It, it, it was just on the clicked. Freeway. So you is know, that where that mm-hmm. line came from? De La Soul. From, from the, the soul. soul. Black yeah. medallion, no, no gold. gold. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, for Dave, you know, it was like kind of his upbringing being an American kid with, from, with parents originally from Haiti, and he just knew like these different way of saying things and, 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 and viewing things, and it added so much ingredients to what we had, mm-hmm. and like... Like how you're saying, people thought we were Spanish. Wow, that yeah. makes like sense. Like when we did our first show, like not in first show, we like we our first in store was in the Bronx. Yeah, and like and nothing but Puerto Ricans yeah, and Dominicans <laughs> show. <up. laughs> yeah. For real. That's dope. Are you talking about Dave being Haitian? That makes so much sense mm-hmm. because you yeah. know. Hispaniola yeah. Yeah. shared by Haiti and Dominican yeah. Republic. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it sounds it, it, yeah. like a His hybrid. His last name, yeah. right? Yeah. It's yeah. wild. Wow, that's real. Mm. Yeah. Tracy's Haitian, that's why yeah, she's right. excited right here. 1804 right there. Yeah. 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 There it is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, I, 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 I'm so, <clears throat> I'm, I'm loving that the streaming is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did that, how did, not being able to stream impact y'all, you know, financially. So I, I want people to know the reality. It uh, very I mean, painful, very very okay. painful. Um, especially when um your childhood dream becomes a profession. Yeah. You start to acquire family responsibilities, and the business you're in definitely has its changes mm-hmm. along the way, and you look to change with it. When I first got in. And I could speak for all of us. When you first start somewhere, you don't expect to make the maximum dollar. You start mm-hmm. with minimum wage. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, especially when somebody's investing in what invest in what you do. But you expect a raise at some point mm-hmm. in what you're doing. And things got stagnated. We never really got the proper, you know, renegotiations throughout the process of being at Tommy Boy. Um, once Tom folded that really hurt when uh, downloading started. Yeah, we missed that entire thing. The catalog ended up in the Warner Brothers system for a very long time <clears throat> until he was able to retrieve it back. But throughout that whole time, we had to tour. We had to. So you had to tour. Had to tour. Well, you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, you know, if you want, you love what you do, you do it. 
You don't know how it's going to pan out, but we just put our faith in God and kept rolling. You know, mm -hmm. we learned a system early on in our career that was instilled in us by rush management, mm -hmm. and we rolled with that tenement for a very long time. That, that how to manage the road is actually the thing that saved us. The mm -hmm. art of managing the road. The road, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing that saved us, putting together a good live show and sticking to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then doing our best to try to get in other situations to keep coming out with music so we wouldn't lose our value mm -hmm. for what we have been able to sustain. You know, for a long time, we've been able to sustain at least going gold, mm -hmm. you know, a good strong 500,000 fans. So we kept nurturing that and just kept going, just trying to focus on the very thing that we've been loving since kids. Mm -hmm. And this is all we've been doing since we left high school. Mm -hmm. So to keep focusing on the profession of it all, the business of it all, so we can take care of our families, you know? And yeah, some, each, it, some of us, our lives are a little bit more demanding than others, so... Mm -hmm. We really got to be there for each other, you know. Myself and Pops end up having more children than Dave. Mm -hmm. He didn't have to really talk like that, but he did. did he, mm -hmm. How many children? Did he have children? Oh uh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. How many? How many you got, Pops? Damn, you gonna put my business out there like that? <laughs> I keep telling y'all, Sway is a radio op. Stop, <laughs> stop <laughs> falling for the traps. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got, well, all all, I know, got five. Got I mean, five. honestly, man, my my thoughts too on it is like, I always look at things more from a positive standpoint mm -hmm. because, like, yo, like, I come from a family where you know my my father worked for the New York Transit Authority, mm -hmm. you know, my mother worked in the school system and the health system. Like, I was like their dream of like I'm doing better than them. Mm -hmm. I, from a positive standpoint, was like, yo, touring is great. Like, that's my job. Like, right. I didn't look at it like I had to tour. It was like, I want to tour because that's my job. I can go someplace and stand on stage for an hour and do what I love, say what I need to say, and get paid well for it. Mm -hmm. So in, in that respect, I always try to look at it from that side. And we were always blessed to have the gentleman who loved us the, the, the guy or the girl who worked at Tommy Boy who would have started in the mail room and they got up higher up in their success and they come out of nowhere and give us, you know, levels and open doors for us because we still was quality in what we do. And like even like you, like as long as we've known you, man, you always had a bridge for us to walk over. We mm -hmm. never burned bridges. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, to, for me, that meant a lot. Like like how's May saying, we earn what we earn and we deserve what we deserve but what we had it was a blessing to have you know what i'm saying because right now we have a lot of fellow peers of ours who can't even be yeah. right. doing what we doing that's right. so true and so it was very i was very grateful for that you know very I'm grateful i mean learning what we learned early on and nurtured mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. you know yeah. nurtured what we knew knowing what we can, can control mm -hmm. the, the part that we can control and that was the live performance getting yeah. that together and sustaining that everything else was a push and pull yeah you and, know up until this point and we had we had all access to that like <clears throat> when when russell wanted to get out of rush mm -hmm. and he was focusing more on the comedy side leor was going to do what he needed to do chris lighty was like yo we got violator mm -hmm. come over here with us yeah, yeah. Chris Lighty, you know what i'm dope, saying man, but we, power. Yeah. you know we always was like mm, let's Let's try to figure out on our own. So we was always learning from that point of, of just self-sustaining. Because Mesa tell this story all the time. Like on our third album, Balloon Mind State, mm -hmm. us and Tribe is on tour. Mm -hmm. Balloon Mind State ain't really doing what it needs to do. Mm -hmm. And and Leo sat us down on tour. You could hear Tribe on killing it, and Leo was like, "Yo, this album's not doing what y'all need to do. Uh, I'm gonna tell y'all, y'all need to tighten y'all belts." And, and get ready for the storm. Yeah, he said that, that. was the yeah. best thing he could ever ever have said to us. Wow, you know I don't, I don't, I don't, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of people who have mixed emotions about Leo. Mm -hmm. You know, I could say, you know, in the beginning, I got early Leo. Uh -huh. You know, you know, he was always pretty much a monster. You know, <laughs> when it came to business, yeah, when right? it came yeah. to business, yeah, he's yeah. a monster, but yeah. he would be a monster for you. Mm -hmm. You know. You just gotta be careful when he's being a monster towards you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he was the monster for us in the right situation. Especially mm -hmm. when 
labels weren't really supportive of their artists and giving tour support and mm -hmm. things that would actually, things that would nurture selling records mm -hmm. other than just touring, mm -hmm. you know? If we could marry these two worlds together, we could be successful on both ends. I knew there was more to it than just touring. Just by being under Rush and learning a lot of what was going on, rolling up to Def Jam and seeing mm -hmm. how their system was rolling versus Tommy Boy's system. Yeah. So I, I got to do some comparing, and I learned a lot and realized, yeah, we love touring, but there's more to this than just touring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's levels to it. Like, come on, we started touring the upper room. That's right, the upper room the upper in room the Bay Area. In the Bay Area. Yes, yes. But then there's levels to this. At some point, I do want to be in Radio City. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's... that's that's the reason of why we start underground to grow to another to level. Grow, yeah. Anybody, any any artist who say they don't want to be successful in this or have some kind of mainstream success, they're a liar. They're a total liar. Everybody would love to have the fruits and vegetables mm -hmm. of, yeah, of, of mainstream the, of this, success. Of, yes, you know. I like you, how you added you just want, you to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some green juice on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Undeniably, it, you can see how it feels. Mm -hmm. You know, you just want it your way. You know, you want it. You want it to be. You want your 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 music and your whatever it is you're doing to be accepted in an authentic way. You don't want to be no fraud. Yeah. You know, for the most part, that's what I knew we needed to have. Like, just to be able to continue to do this, thirty plus years later, mm -hmm. we need to share a lot of other parts of the fabric of this business and just that of being stuck in one lane. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, it's interesting. Um, before Balloon Mind State was De La Soul is Dead. Mm -hmm. And that was a great album, by the way. Round of applause mm. for that album, right? Mm. Uh, and to me, the messaging in that album, uh, which was made in about, what, 91? Yeah. You could play today. Mm. And what's happened in recent years in the music business and music, you know, you could play today and it'll still be applicable. Mm. I always wondered if the title, though, had a, a, a reverse effect of the success of that album. Like, hearing De La Soul is dead scared me mm. right after the first album. What do you mean? Does that mean I'm dead? Like, what does that mean? Right. I, did, I didn't understand that uh, until I heard the album. Though. Right. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, well, what kind of effect did that title have? To, to Tommy Boy, that reverse effect. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They were a little afraid, especially when at that time, <clears throat> labels would like you to replicate success. Yeah. Give us another me, myself, and I. It's just not going to happen. You know, um, it was also killing off of an idea that people were misconstruing the whole hippie thing. Yeah. Um, misunderstanding what Daisy meant and all of that, you know, and granted, it reminded people of some great things, but that just wasn't us. And we knew we couldn't get boxed into something that would inhibit us from making more music. Mm -hmm. So it was all about killing off the whole Daisy age. Well, the, the idea uh, of the hippie thing okay. behind the and, Daisy Age. And then also the title came behind being at Rush one day and seeing this crazy schedule on the board. <laughs> of all the albums that were dropping? Of or? all the artists going on okay. the road and you know, you get to see everyone's schedule on this, this this chalkboard. And we were filled up on the calendar. Us, leaders, brand new being and it was definitely us. Us you just see us. And Dave erased the entire board and wrote De La Soul is Dead on every <laughs> on every wow. calendar date that we had on the, on the really? calendar. He wrote De La Soul is Dead because he was like, yo, this is going to kill us. And he wrote De La Soul wow. is Dead. And that's how the title actually morphed. <laughs> that's how the title came? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We laughed. Yeah, he was laughing like, because he was in rush looking yeah. at it. He just said... He just raced that shit. <laughs> and he wrote, Daylight's dead, Daylight's dead, Daylight's dead, Daylight's yeah. dead. And then he <laughs> was like, yo, that would be a dope title yeah. for an album. Yeah. And we was like, yo, let's do it. And at that point, we didn't know what it would really mean, but then it became like, yo, this could mean like how Def is transitioning. Crazy we're talking about that right now. Uh -huh. But it's like, it was like us transitioning from the Daisy Age into these, these growing men, you know. And... It made sense, and I understand even from from a label standpoint, they was like, look, you had something that was so inclusive, you know, and we understood that, but we felt like the fans that we saw was willing to grow as well, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't really 
push some way, someone away in which not being inclusive would be not spending your money on De La Soul. Mm-hmm. So I got it. it people was really um, like, nah, man, you shouldn't say De La Soul is dead. But we was like, nah, man, like death is like a way of transitioning to something else. Mm. Yep. Wow. And it really is what it is. Get that around to the five. Mm-hmm. That's what we've been this morning. That's what we've been. I share with you. I lost my grandmother this week. So I, I yeah, man. But it, 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 death is a way of transitioning yeah. to something else, mm-hmm. yep. right? And, and we've been celebrating. I came in because I wanted to make sure I talked to y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, otherwise you wouldn't, you know. Be, <laughs> you know, but because of these reasons, you know, we sharing these losses. You know, yeah. and, I, and I'm glad you said that. Stakes is high. Was that your response to Lior saying? Was that, you know, did y'all go to the studio and go, man, we got to do something different? And then Stakes is High came out. Um, well, I, I think Stakes is High was more feeling like it's a crucial moment. Okay. Mm. Either we're going to continue or we're going to be done with this and go get day jobs. Ooh. And. Wow. Because, you know, you get plagued with this industry. Yeah. Telling you, telling you that, yo, by your third album, you're probably going to be done. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. they, they treated it like high school or college success. Mm-hmm. You know, and then we begin to learn things, especially from marketing meetings, where women in hip-hop are done with it after college. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You That's what hear, they tell you, right, through research, yeah. right? And then when, you know, and I would do my own little groundwork and talk to women, and they would be like, mm, hip-hop was something I was into when I was younger, mm-hmm. or my college years my high school years. And your big consumer market is women and children. Men don't buy nothing. Mm -hmm. They buy what women like or what their kids want. More than anything, when it comes to hip hop, men are critics. Mm -hmm. They the ones who say, that's hot, that's not, but they're not ones really purchasing. It's women and children that's your buying public. Especially when it comes to a group like De La Soul, Mm -hmm. It was more women and children, mm. you know? And, yeah, getting plagued with those ideas. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it was very crucial. I'll never forget Dave being kind of uptight about it being very crucial. That's when we um, severed our relationship with Paul. You know, Prince on, Paul? Well, yeah. yeah we on, were... a, on a good note, though. Yeah. Okay. On a All good right. note. It was, okay. it was really on a good note. It was just... You wanted something different? Having difference of creative, creativity, and where we're, our lives was a lot more serious at this point. Uh-huh. Yeah. So doing all the comical stuff didn't quite, it, it showed up, but naturally. Yeah. You know, as you can see, Stakes is High was a much more serious record. Yeah. Talking about what was happening in the industry, what's happening in our lives, and where we think this is going, and hoping that it worked out. And it, it did work out, obviously, you know. Yeah. But it was a very crucial moment of saying that, this is gonna be the record to determine whether we're gonna continue or we're done. Yeah, it was the it was the first album where we actually had the title right at the top of recording. Mm-hmm. Normally that happens later, like what is this gonna be, da da da. But yeah, it was like everything May said, Dave's cousin Fudge. Fudge, I was about to say was that. Was like, yo man. Rest in peace, Fudge. He said, Steaks is hot. And we was like, Yo, that's it. <laughs> Yo, the way y'all find album titles. Right. Yo. <laughs> that's crazy. Nah, it was, it was it was really like that. So yeah. we went in with the goal, and like he said, we had already actually started working some, on some stuff with Paul. But yeah, it's just like that chamber that Paul has that he's so good at, it wasn't meshing with mentally where we wanted to go uh-huh. and say for, for this album. Mm. Salute to you Prince know. Paul, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he yeah. saw it in the beginning. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he saw that's, it when no one else did, right? That's big bro. Yeah. That's my mentor. He changed my life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, totally. So. I saw I saw the Grammy performance, mm. right? Um, mm. I know that must have been... Uh, it, it raised a lot of questions, but uh, the fact that y'all were represented there, mm-hmm. I thought, to me, I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, how did it feel? It felt really good and sad at the same time. It was bittersweet for me. Yeah. Because you're right, they reached out. They wanted us to represent. They they felt like we can't even do this without y'all on the timeline. Mm-hmm. But I knew like where Dave was with his health that it was maybe touch and go, you know. So it he was trying to get there. Yeah, he was trying to make it. He tried to make it. <clears throat> yeah. He tried what does to that make mean? It. He was trying to was he bedridden or what? Was no, it? no. He okay. was he was up and around. He okay. was doing what he was doing. But he he actually just caught a really bad cold and but with his immune system just kind of already a bit compromised and yeah. 
you know, they've had heart issues. Yeah. So that's where it was just kind of like he didn't know if he could get on a plane dealing with all that pressure of flying mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to get to me to rock. So, yeah, it was it was bittersweet. And we we spoke about this like if Dave passed on a Sunday, we was on the phone with each other Thursday. And I'm just telling him about how much people have so much love for us. I mean, I'm talking about from the biggest star in that room that day to the the, the security guy, you mm-hmm. know. Everyone was grabbing me yeah. and like, yo, we're so happy for y'all. We can't wait. I see Rick Ross. I just give him that, whatever. I'm about to, he pulls me back like, yo, I'm happy for you, man. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm we, ready. We've we, been having some really good moments in yeah. the last few months. Can you months. share just, some? Can just, share? just talking amongst each other mm-hmm. yeah. and preparing for all of this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So to lose Dave was like, it was a big blow because we was really on the phone like, like kids again, yo, I'm ready. Yeah. We're gonna get ready. We're gonna do this. We was like, yeah, yo, you yeah. see, you see Melly Mel? Like, you see the most of We all like He's 20 years older than me. Like, yo, yeah. We gotta get to that. Looking at Melly Mel going, we really messing up out here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yo, I was like, I was, I was like, Mel, Chuck Flavor? Yeah. Yo, we gotta get up here. We gotta and we was all laughing and bugging out, man. And yeah. yeah. And, uh, and we was very proud of Merce. Mm-hmm. We was very proud of Merce. Holding it down, really mm-hmm. looking good up there, sounding good, looking legendary. <laughs> yeah, you did look legendary. Hey, you hit him with the smile too, bro. Hey. Yeah. I, I put the specs back he on put and the everything. Specs like, on. I, was oh, like, yeah. I was like, oh, you got the specs on, y'all. <laughs> <yo." laughs> I was at the home, I was at the crib filming it right you on the TV. On the- <laughs> <laughs> did that boy, you did that boy, boy. Yo, <laughs> hey, you no. look amazing doing yeah, it, bro. Did, Thank man. you, man. It was a blessing, man. Standing there, even with Chuck, I mm-hmm. mean, everybody, and, and, yeah, and yeah. Chuck was even saying it like, "Yo, man, like," he was saying it then, like, "Yo, everyone, take this in, like, get these pictures, hug, because like, yeah. some that's of us ain't gonna be here for another so four hundred. That's what I was gonna say, because Chuck was here a couple of weeks ago, KG was here from Naughty by Nature, mm. Vinny was here, and we just been having these conversations, and like off the record, I saw. Merce outside, and we just hugged each other mm-hmm. so tight in front of the food truck. Mace walked in, we just hugged each other so tight. It's my my, my brother. Mm. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Come on. No, that's that real. Out, man. Like, yeah. these are my brothers from yeah. doing shows together. Yeah. Yeah. But you cooking for them, too? We was, was it <laughs> nah, you that one. Well. <laughs> uh, nah, she owed me that. that. She owed me that Yo, one. But, <laughs> but you was on the road with them. Yeah, yeah like, to yeah. go from, from my days with Chris and KRS1 mm. yeah. all the way up to solo artists. Mm-hmm. Like, you talking 30 years, yeah. you mm-hmm. know? And so when y'all say that in these hugs, everything just means something so different now. Mm-hmm. Like, you use the word take care. Take care don't mean the same thing it meant 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. Like, now we got to take care of each other spiritually mm-hmm. and mentally and yeah. physically as well. Yeah. So I just want to remind you, like, we got to take care of each other. Mm-hmm. We just really do. It's yeah. just different. Like, mm-hmm. remember back then when Scott LaRock passed or, God forbid, Biggie and Pop, it was just like the world stopped. It was mm-hmm. breaking news, these murders. Now we losing our brothers and sisters and it's like you pause for a minute and then you just got to keep, gotta keep going. going. But yeah. we got to double back and check on people now yeah, because yeah. the yeah. taking care is different. Yeah. We have to mentally and emotionally and spiritually take care of each other. So I'm just glad y'all are here, mm, you, you know, and I, I love y'all, love man. You too. Love and you that's too. what Word. those tight hugs was Word for. Up. I love Word y'all, up. for Word. real. Yeah. Mace yeah. brought his kids too. They was hugging hey. tight too. They, <laughs> they was like, yo, I know Uncle Sway got some money. He's gonna, <laughs> he's gonna pay off somehow. Thank you, Dad. Yeah, yeah man. Beautiful. You know, yeah, uncles, beautiful. that's all we do yeah. now. Yeah. We, we just hand out the cash yeah, yeah. now, man. Yeah, did yeah. I meet you before? Uh-huh. Do I know you? Did I meet you before? We never met before? Okay. I feel like I met. You know mm. Faith? F- Faith. Faith. Newman. Newman. Oh, I know the name. <laughs> well, hi. Of course you do. Wow. Look I know she name. Looks. I don't know if we ever met before. Imagine wow. Barry. Faith been drinking. I'm Heather. Like goat blood or something, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you look amazing. That's why I walked by you. She said, you just walked by oh, me. Oh, wow. I like, yeah, I know your name. Who's this kid? Your name. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't know me. <laughs> no, people look familiar. Yeah. And you know, that's uh-huh. why I'm saying, like, it's this. you don't just walk people, no, walk by folks anymore. Mm-hmm. We got to right. check in. Mm-hmm. Got to check in. Just say hey, hello. We mm-hmm. just did it in front of the hotel. We stand in front of the hotel. This dude walking by, I'm like, yo, he looks familiar, but I was going to let it go. Make sure it's like, nah. Nah, like, yo, nah. Yeah, I why do it. I know you? He yeah. was like, 
you acted. He said, "Well, I'm a singer, but I I act as well. I was in I was in The Wire." He's like, "Yo, you didn't do it." <laughs> yeah, he played. He played the um, recovering addict, addict talking to bugs. Talking to bugs. Yeah, wow. Well, that's the guy oh, we ran wow. into. No, yeah, no. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I gotta do that. Like we're saying, ever since like even especially with when the pandemic kicked in and we was in the house and yo coming out. Dave Chappelle doing things, man. Like I hug people, like yo, I yeah. grab right. common, yeah. uh-huh. and I was like, yo, you man, to, man, I'm not letting you go. Like uh-huh. it's that serious, and mm-hmm. it's really good. Like even with my youngest son, like to see him express himself when he wants to talk to me about things, and like, yo, man, I want to talk to you, and like, I didn't do that with my father. Like yeah. my right. father's my idol, but yeah. I didn't pull my father to the side and tell him about what's going on with me. And like, I'm happy that these younger kids are doing that uh-huh. and like right. I'm feeling at the age I'm at like with my brothers man I want to talk to them because yes. yo, they may not be here uh-huh. you don't want to feel like yo I didn't get to say what I need to say to this person mm-hmm. on that note can you guys speak a bit about your healing process mm-hmm. cause I gotta say when I first saw you guys on the calendar I was a bit surprised mm-hmm. and I said wow are they ready mm-hmm. cause it's been still so under a month yeah you know and this industry it always moves and i think about kanye who went on tour immediately after the passing of his mother Mother's. i'm thinking about mm. seeing offset so many places but people have different ways of coping yeah. you know and some people it's like i want to be surrounded by love and mm-hmm. i want to speak about the person who has transitioned yeah. other people may need to hibernate a bit what is being outside like and still being De La Soul right now? How is that impacting you both? Can I curse? Yeah. Weird as fuck. Mm-hmm. Weird. Mm-hmm. My man ain't here. Mm-hmm. I got moments like now. I'm, I'm trying not to cry. Listening to Sway talk, I just got to pause because it's rough. It's day by day for me. Mm-hmm. Paz put the battery in my back to come outside. Mm-hmm. You. you know, there's... There's Beach Street is the movie we've always related to Come on. through our childhood. Come Shout on. out to Lee. Come so on. today, we actually celebrating our Ramon. Mm. Ramon. Ramon. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Our Ramon. Yeah. Yeah, he, so, was, he was spiraling in the rabbit hole. I said, nah, nigga, I'm coming to your house. So, yep. He came I'm to the you. house. I'm glad you got him. And we had, my we my had, wife, my kids, yeah. and him. Got me out my hole, you good, know. Good. My kids, my wife, they just held me, uh, you know, yeah. and we helped me get through it because I know I got to face it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to face this quicker than I face Fife, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. For a minute, I couldn't touch no Tribe Records, uh-huh. but I know I got to step into this for what we were preparing for. Uh-huh. And he would want this. He would. Yeah. He need me to, Dave needs me to step he into this. He needs you yeah. to step up, right? Yeah, and... Me, seeing the family on Saturday going to his house was definitely more affirmation to get out here and still hold it down, mm-hmm. you know? His entire family was like, you guys are brothers. We know y'all loved each other. Dave would want y'all to continue on. I mean, hearing this from his sister, his cousins, mm. and everybody else, it was it was definitely inspiring. Yeah. I don't know how. I don't know what that how is. Yeah, mm. I just know I'm going to do it. And I'm going to just f- take it day by day, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sometimes yeah. God is the how. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah. And it the how be. comes from knowing your why. Yeah. 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 I, got, that's, that's I got faith. I got a lot of faith in Amen. God. I got a we lot got of a faith. faith really in the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's know. why you brought it. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know. No, I mean, like, for me, it was it was like. And God don't make no mistakes. Well, yeah. Amen. Amen. So, for me, immediately, the first night, all I was saying was, damn, Dave. Like, mm. damn, man. Like. You gone, like, we lost you, like, damn, like, we were about to do it, all this hard work, like, damn, and, like, you just, you know, you you in your depression state. And for me, immediately, the next night, I had to turn into, like, <clears throat> thank you, Dave. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being my brother. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've ever put into our hearts, this music. I, I And right now every night i go to bed saying thank you dave i wake up saying thank you dave Uh wow and that's what it is for me to be grateful for everything that he contributed to our lives period and that helps me to know what it is and this is what i learned actually at a young age right before we came out when i lost my mom so you know Uh i graduated from high school the next day after graduation my mother got diagnosed with cancer 
and, and lung cancer wow. never smoked a day in her life. Wow. Mm. So these are just things that, you know, through our running through the paths, I always try to be positive, man. I look at what what things mean and what it, and, and not 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 shy away from what's going on, but uh-huh. just try to look at the, the agreeable side of things. And, yo, know, Dave had an amazing life. He didn't leave this earth in a sense of his life he didn't contribute anything to to, uh-huh. to to his family. He gave a lot to his family and he gave so much to the world, like where people who he don't even know knows him, you know, and that's an, who gets to do that? Not a lot of people. Not let alone people. touch people in such yeah. a positive way. And we as Daylight was has always been more of a personable group. Mm-hmm. We've never been like unapproachable. And that's why it hit really hard for people, you know, like it really hit hard. You know, like fans Hitting Dave's sister, you know, like, yo, can we just come stand in front of the house and pray? Like, they mm. really mean that for yeah, the bro. heart. You wow. know, yeah, man. You know? Yep. Y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all. Uh... I woke up this morning and said, I'm on time, Dave. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, I'm gonna be at Sway's on time, Dave. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Didn't I bait? Didn't I bait? <laughs> That's, That's good. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, and I, I know you'll probably be asked this, but I, I know there's some unreleased Dave verses somewhere, right? Tons of them. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, you know, will we hear more of De La Soul music? I, I would say yes. Okay. I mean, yeah, I'm, come I'm, on, I'm, I'm, man. Put it like this. I'm going to say yes. Myself and Paz, we got to sit down and talk about how we're going to really approach this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Figure out how to keep this, not just our legacy, his legacy mm-hmm. yeah. alive mm-hmm. and get on that stage and do what we do. Yeah. You know, we just got to, I mean, once we get through tonight and tomorrow, we're going to sit down top of next week and figure some things out. What's what's happening tonight? Tonight is the release, the release party, party slash man. memorial for our Ramon. Okay. Our yes. Ramon. You know what I'm saying? It's a Beach Street night. Okay. Woo! If you, you know don't know saying? who Ramon is, he was the character that got electrocuted on the third for rail. Tag, he yes. was a graph writer, mm-hmm. right? Uh, aerosol can, yes, mm-hmm. you know, artist. And um, he, he died and they had a big celebration on at New the Year's end Eve. of- It was a New Year's Eve party, party that yeah. turned into a memorial yeah, service. Yeah, man, it was amazing. A celebration. Yep, yeah, turned yep. into a celebration. And so, Mel was a part yeah, of that. Yeah, I'm hoping Mel show up tonight and perform that song. <laughs> that I, I talk to Flash. I talk to Flash, so I'm hoping Flash get the crew and bring them through for there real. But go. if not, we gonna improv tonight. We got the originals DJing. Yeah, oh. D, D Nice, Clark Kent, yeah. Tony Touch, Stretch Armstrong. Yeah, Rich you know, Medina. Rich Medina. Yeah. Can we say this on Where's It At? Or? Um, yeah, it's at Webster Hall. Shit, oh, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm no. saying, I'm saying, oh, man. I've been there, baby. Oh, no. Cause I want wow. for my man. That's yes. right. Yeah. Wow. And Get really, like, I, I'm going to honestly say, please. Faith and Ali is in the corner. If, like, if it's gonna why be, are you doing yo, this? If it's going to be crazy like that, though, come show your love. No no violence. No no nonsense. Absolutely no. not. For real. All love don't, only. Don't, don't come with the nonsense, please. Don't come with the nonsense. Yeah. And the music will be streaming, and we will continue to uh, support, play it the whole nine, man. Celebrate. I, celebrate, man. We got a few folks on the line nice. before y'all go. Y'all mm. mind if we do that real yeah, quick? Yeah, okay. for sure. Uh, let's go to Marilyn D'Angelo's on the line. What up, what D? What up, D? Hey, D. What's, what's up? What's up? What's the way you have the trade? What's going on? What's good? No much. This is the Road Warrior. First of all, man, I'm going I'm to I'm give a shout out to Dave. For all the road warriors, mm. I'm going to blow the horn for one time, for bro. Yeah. But, yo, hey, yo, I'm going to shout. I'm gonna, hey, Sway, I'm going to tell you straight up, man. These some good dudes. Mm. I don't know if Mace remember me from back in the day in Salisbury, Maryland. With uh, with ski, with ski, uh, ski with beast? ski from back in the day. Yeah, huh? yeah, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. Hey, look, man, look, they were they were good dudes. Way, way in them used to bring y'all down back in the day, yeah. man. Wow, yeah. love, man. Uh-huh. No doubt, no doubt. Hey, so wait, I got a funny story for me. And what's up, pops? My what's back, up, my brother. Go ahead. What's good? Hey, uh, so wait, we was in we was in uh, Mace's room, and I said I said Mace, man. 
where, where you loop that beat from? He said, if I tell you, I got to kill you. I said, I can't kill you. <laughs> Sound like face. <laughs> yo, but they were good dudes, man. Much love to y'all, man. Oh, love. Thank you, my brother. I'm from Maryland, baby. No doubt. Good to hear you, bro. Hey, D, take care, brother. You a super citizen, man. Good morning. Let's go to Florida. We got Efren on the line. Efren, rise and shine. Efren, what's good? What's up, hey, man? how's it going, everybody? Hey, what hey up, bro. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for tomorrow. We we actually have a, a, a De La Soul uh, uh, De La Soul Day party at Crowbar. Ooh. Wow. They, they, you, know, you play at Crowbar a few times. Yes, times. I have. I remember Crowbar. Uh, yeah, we actually got Prince Paul coming down. Okay. Yeah, no we, 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 planned this, we planned this party six months ago. No doubt. We did an MF Doom party wow. in, in July. Mm. And right after that, we said, who else can we celebrate? And we picked the day of the, the uh, 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 Three Feet High and Rise and Release. Mm. And then after that, you guys announced that it's going to be going to streaming. Uh, and and I'm just super excited, you know, super yes, excited. Dude. I don't think people really understand how big this is. I think this should be an annual thing that 3-3 three, three is De La Soul Day. Wow. Oh, man, that's, okay. an you know that's an idea. No that's an idea, no doubt. That's an idea. 3-3 is De La Soul Day. De La Soul Day. De La Soul Day. Mm. And, and it's so funny. Mm. I, started I can rock with that. Uh, your three old feet. videos. Mm. I couldn't find a lot of your videos. It's yeah. like they wiped them all out. So I found a couple of them on Daily Motion, Vimeo, but I found the It's So Easy video. Mm -hmm. And that was one of my favorite videos. And I just was curious, how was it shooting that video with so many cameos? You had Pete Rock, you had Moni Love, you had, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Black Sheep. Like, mm -hmm. it was a dope video. Like, Thank how you, was bro. it shooting that video? Man, that was one of the most fun videos yeah, to shoot. it was shoot. fun. It was pretty much everybody we grew up with in this business. Yeah. You know, right. The love that day, the excitement that day. It, it actually we shot it in a, a, a old high school, so it felt okay. like a high school day. Yeah, you know, right. it was a lot of fun, right, a lot right. of good energy. All those brothers and sisters are family. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, yeah. man, man I'm, I'm I'm so excited. I actually did a T-shirt for the event tomorrow. Oh, damn, man, he uh, making money too. Ooh, you committed. <laughs> you, you the fun. You going you in right fun. now? <laughs> it, it, it says stream steak steaks is hot daily. Wow, and it's, mm -hmm. and it's just for people to stream this album. I mean, That's Quest Love up. said it best. We have the power to put all six of these albums in the top ten. Mm. Actually, let's like, do we it. Have that let's do it. Let's and do that, y'all. Yo, yes, come on, let's like, like that. Come on, and uh, here, uh, uh, guess yo, I what? salute you, bro. Hey, Efren, guess what? Yeah. Tomorrow, March third is um, the day that on Rock the Bells Radio they've dubbed as Daylight Day, so yeah. it already exists. Okay, yes. Rock the Bells. Okay. Okay. They're gonna be playing uh, De La Soul music all day. Mm. Uh, I'll, I'll definitely tune in. Where are Where are De La Soul? Make sure you follow that. The catalog hits all it, man. And, and here's the thing, man. These albums are works of art. Mm. Yes. Evergreen, you, really are. All you, of them, really man. I, I, you're gonna get. Yeah. You will enjoy streaming from the first album to the last. Yeah, it man. makes sense. Yeah. Nothing was frivolous. Mm. It was all you know, well I got thought it when out. You guys gave it out for free. I got it a few years back. Mm. Y'all gave the whole catalog away. But uh, I, I, I'm so excited for tomorrow, man. Thank I'm you, so happy friend. for you guys. Thank and you, brother. I, I, I can't wait, man. And you a citizen, that friend. A swing in the morning, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, gentlemen, I just, you know, I'm glad we got a chance to talk today. Amen. And let's continue these conversations. Man, we, we sure. started the revolution here. It started right here. Mm -hmm. yeah. started right here. <laughs> the revolution was televised right here. <laughs> right here. I remember that. <laughs> and then the world went into a De La Soul frenzy. <laughs> Shut it down. And everybody started jumping on board. Yeah, That's man. when the culture works at is finest. Yeah, man. Yeah. Right? It wasn't about industry. We had to support and protect our own. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It wasn't yeah. about metrics, uh, industry, mm -hmm. budgets, none of that shit. This right. was fired up. It was fueled by culture. Mm. It was no way that they can do this. If they can do that to De La Soul, mm -hmm. imagine what they, they can, can do, do to you. Yeah, mm. yeah no doubt. At mm. 1989. Mm-hmm. It's when the first album came out. Crazy. Do the math. Is mm -hmm. that 34 years? Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Wouldn't you love to be have a career for 34 years mm -hmm. and counting? So if they're not taken care of, you won't be taken care of. Facts. Mm -hmm. This would be that would be the precedent. Mm -hmm. But we reversed all that shit. And so mm. tomorrow, make sure you streaming this De La Soul Woo! music. Come yes, on, sir. man. Just keep it on stream. Thank you, man. I don't know why it's uh, Pandora. Is it on Pandora? That's our company. It will be. 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 It will be everywhere. That's going to be everywhere.
There you go. Yeah, you in the building. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. Tisha Campbell waving in oh, here. Oh, Tisha Campbell got to come right. in. Oh, get this and, right and right Yvette here. Nicole Brown. And Yvette Nicole and yo, Brown. yo, if I could, I want to make sure I just give a big shout to Reservoir. Yeah. Yeah, man. They, they really stepped in. They didn't have to do what they did once they acquired Tommy Boy. It's beyond just being fans of our music and even us knowing different people up there, whether it was Spec, Faith, who we've known for, for years. Um, they're good people. They were fair to us. We talked it out, and we, we did what we needed to do. And I want to just really I really want to thank them. Reservoir, even, even honestly. Even after everything was right with us, you know, just the process of clearing and, you know, just all the stuff, the business that needed to be taken care of, they was right there, front and center with us. So I mean, it's been a blessing. It's Reservoir. an amazing team at yeah. Reservoir. Yeah. Okay. Um, look, look forward to the future of Reservoir yeah. Media. No There's going to be a lot of good things yeah. going on with them. Let's go. Literally, absolutely. Yeah. And Dave is smiling on us right Word now. Up. Amen. He's with that in the tooth room missing. with the tooth missing. <laughs> Word up. And, you, he, 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 and I know that haircut is doing Campbell's something different, building. right? Jesus Christ. Um, I just wanted to bring Tisha and Yvette Nicole Ooh, Brown in. Yvette, yeah. Tisha, you know, just so we can make a moment Big right family. now. You know, they in the room, they are coming up you. next. Yes. You know, I just wanted to just let everybody hug it out, right? They're coming up next. Um, I want to I wanna have this. Beautiful, man. Uh -huh. Citizens, you already know what it is. Call us up, 888-742-3345. Yes, um, um, I want to thank you, fellas. Let's keep going. Yes, yeah. man. All day, Swain. Yo, we, we we brought them to the bay to perform for the Yee. wake up show. Like we've mm -hmm. done it on every level. Every yeah. level, indeed, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody thought hip hop would take Come it this on. far. Yeah. I said it. <laughs> no, and you've been right there with That's us, real. both of y'all. Man, yeah, love y'all, right family, y'all. Yeah, man, y'all yeah, 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 family, yeah, yeah, man, yeah. gotta family. keep going, man. Y'all, yeah. I told you, I would, would be no me if it wasn't for you. Hey. All that baggy shit I was wearing as a kid. <laughs> Crazy, my locks, my crazy face, high top face, all that shit. Sway ain't had no gold, he had beads. I had beads, kid, and I smelled uh, phenomenal. Uh, <laughs> come on, indeed, come on, my Carol daughters, Carol daughters all day, Carol uh, daughters. Man. <laughs> Thank Women you, like me because I dress like y'all. Hey. <laughs> what did you say? Fashionable hey. hand-me-downs? <laughs> I have my fashionable hand-me-downs on. An old shirt look popping back yeah. there. <laughs> the older and dustier the yeah, shirt, uh -huh. y'all made it cool. Uh -huh. Anyway, <laughs> thrift, right. thrift shops became boutiques. There no. you go. Oh, yeah. Sounds yeah. like a bar. But you cannot deny the messaging. You cannot you, my deny the divine messaging mm. in your music. It's why you've been here 34 years yeah. oh and keep gosh. going. Yes, Dave is still here. Come back, fellas. Mm. Yes. Hey, this just, is always your bridge. Thank you, I definitely want to shout out. Absolutely. Thank you, Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to shout out my wife, yes. Tina Mason. Amen. My son, Chauncey. My daughter, Dayu. My other son, Trey, I just want to say thank you for being by my side. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah, for real. I well, want to thank man. my brother, Poss, for yeah, being man. by my side. Yeah, man. You know? All and day. I want to shout out one particular group, The Locks. Yeah. Whoa. Mm. I see their relationship for mm. a long time. Yeah. They're brothers. They remind me of us. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 I, I see the camaraderie. I see the brotherhood. I see mm. the family. And them mm. that I don't really see in no other group outside of tribe and jungle. Mm. Yeah, I want to say, stay strong, brothers. Yeah, stay strong. Love on each other. Mm. Keep supporting each other. Amen. Take it all the way to the grave. Come on. Amen. I love y'all. There you go, man. Give it up for Maceo. Give it up right. for Plug One. Yeah. Wow. Maceo Mason, Plug One Mercer. Blur it up. And Dave True Goy, De La Soul. Okay. We celebrating tonight. We streaming tonight. I'm at Western Hall tonight. Yeah. I'm bringing out my Jabril jeans. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> I got my old school Jabril jeans. I'm bringing it all out. Okay. I love you. I love y'all, man. I love, love you, too, brother. Man. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Let's do more. Absolutely. Yep. My sister is up next. Tisha Campbell is up next. Yeah. Tisha yeah. Campbell. She didn't come along. Much respect, Yvette Nicole sister. Brown is up in here. <laughs> oh, wow. They smelling we good. Was like we were watching we last night. All right. <laughs> hey, Torch, give us some Daylight, some classics.